Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I bless God for this day. <laughs> Listen, the word of God is sweet. Oh, I pray, I pray you see it, you see it. Your suffering is unnecessary. You are not supposed to suffer one day. And you are not supposed to be bound by the system of this world. No, 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 you're not supposed to be. There is so much God has created for you if only you can see it. And that's why I'm sharing these things with you. I'm teaching you today you know, on how to withdraw from your heavenly account. So I say, first of all, you must understand that whatever you will receive, you've got to be given. You know what I mean by that? Whatever you need, whatever you need, you have to receive it. So settle it in your mind because that is how God's system works. If, if you, know, you know, your mindset, that's why the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what, that's what I'm taking time to explain all these things to you. So your mind will get to that place where like, you know what, I think I've been holding myself bound. I'm free today. Yeah, what happens? Information has come. A renewal has taken place. If you want a new car, you will receive it. If you want to move to a new house, you will receive it. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, where your mind has been locked is, if I want a new house, I've got to get a better job or I've got to get a good business. And then I can afford those things. And I'm telling you, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Now, someone's saying, hey, all these preachers, they are telling people, God can do this, God. They are trying to make people lazy. You, you can't listen to this message I'm teaching and you'll be lazy. It's impossible. What I'm teaching you to do now, a lazy man cannot do it. A lazy man cannot believe God. Now, I'm not just sitting down there and saying, hmm, I believe God. Oh, I be no, sitting there and hoping is different from a man who understands that, look, I'm going to take step one, two, three, and then by the time I'm done with one, two, three, I'm going to get this result. And then he gets up and begins to walk it. The Bible says, Whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty, and he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. See, a doer of the work. Which work is he talking about? You don't realize that to believe God is hard work. You know, many people don't know. So they think, they think preachers are lazy people. They think, they think preachers are teaching people to be lazy. You don't understand it. You are the one doing the wrong work. <laughs> God. You are doing the wrong work. You are suffering for nothing. And we are teaching you how to switch from the wrong work to the right work. So you begin to live a good life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So he says, He, be not a forgetful hearer, but he is a doer of the work. Which work? They came to Jesus one day and he says, in John chapter 6, they said, what must we do that we may walk the works of God? See the question they asked Jesus? They said, what must we do so that we will walk the works of God? And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom God has sent. Is that one work? <laughs> oh, you don't know work then. You don't know work then. For example, I'm telling you now that you, you don't need a new job. You don't need a pay rise to move to a better house. And then you're looking at me and saying, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. You see your problem? Because you, you are too lazy. You can't do the real work. To you, I keep going to my job, doing my work right, and then they find me faithful. They increase my pay. Or if something happens, I get a better job, then I start making some more money, and that's a lazy man's work. You are too lazy in your mind to accept what God is saying. 
You need, to, you need to go before the Lord in repentance and say, Lord, you know what? You need to tinker with my brain. So when you hear the word of God and it's so difficult for you to believe, it's because you're lazy. Your mind has been put to sleep. Your mind was created to hear God and understand him. But because to many, their mind have been put to sleep, when they hear God's word, huh, mm, they, they can't articulate it. You know, it's like you're talking to somebody and your intelligence is too far from the person. And you're trying to tell the person what is normal to you and the person is like, huh, uh, <laughs> uh, um, bros, see, you know what? Just leave this matter. Just leave that thing. I've heard people talk like that. You are trying to tell them this is easy. This is simple. I said, see, eh? just leave this thing. It's like when God was trying to convince Abraham. God told Abraham, Abraham, hey, yes, sir. Sarah, your wife, will give birth. And Abraham thought about it. <laughs> he laughed. The Bible said he fell on the floor laughing. And when he was done laughing, guess what he said? He said, Lord, let Ishmael just leave before you. You know what else? You see this thing you're saying? <laughs> I don't want to even imagine it. I don't want Im to Just imagine Sarah being her tummy is big. And then she's now, I, I just experienced a hey, guy. And all those drama of pregnancy. So I'm imagining Sarah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> no, 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 no. His mind couldn't take it. God had to be on it. God had to keep convincing him. God had to keep convincing him until he could see it. He could see it. That's what happens to a lot of God's people. They cannot fathom God's truth. They cannot understand. Their minds cannot take it. So what happens? God keeps walking on them, walking on them, walking on them, walking on them. What's he doing? He is now doing the work in you. For the Bible says, for it is God that works in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Many of God's children, God wants to take them to a great thing in life, but they cannot accept it. So what? God begins to walk in them. He's walking in you. He's walking in you. He will put precept upon precept, line upon line, precept upon precept. It takes you here a little. It takes you there a little. You receive this information from this place. It takes you to this other place. You receive more information. And then what's it doing? Trying to get your mind to accept it. Until you get to that point where you say, I think I see it now. Yeah, I, I see it now. I see it now. Two years ago, you couldn't see that. But now you can see it. What, what has happened to you? Some informations have come to you. You need to upgrade. That's what I'm telling you. You need to upgrade. You need to get to that point where it is easy for you to believe that you can receive. It's easy for you to believe that you have an account in heaven. You need that change. You need that change. If not, you will keep suffering in life. We all have an account with God. Oh, we do. Why? Because we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Do you know what that means? Everything Jesus owns, we own. So why are you suffering then? Good question. Because of your mind. Your mind hasn't accepted it. You hear it. You say amen to the prayer. But when you are alone, can you see the progression? Can you see your life progressing in this way? Can you pray the prayer for a better life without your mind being locked at the job you're doing today? Can you ask God for a car without your mind thinking of all the things you need to do to get a good car? Can you just simply ask because it is your father? The earth is his, the fullness thereof. The earth belongs to him. Every car, every car you see them drive, every car in the car shop, they all belong to us. Oh, they belong to us. Oh, they belong to us. They do, they do, they do. Every good house you see on the streets, every good thing you see, the gold, the diamonds you see in the shop, and you look at the price and you're just nodding your head saying, hmm, they all belong to you. Oh, they all belong to you. They belong to you. Question is, do you need it? Say, hey, yeah, yes, I need it. Then ask your father for it. Ask. Ask. 
So you want something now. And then you, you are convinced that I've been, I've been sowing, I've been giving, I've been tithing right. You know, I've, I've been putting money in my heavenly account. I've been doing that. You are convinced in your heart. That's what I told you. You need to be convinced of that first. Question then is, what do you need now? Okay, I need a good house. I need a better house. All right. You need it? Fine. You go before the Lord and say, with this understanding, see, it's understanding that matters. If you cannot see it, forget it. Your prayer is in vain. You come before the Lord with this understanding. What understanding? You know what? For me to get a good house, I'll, I'll have to receive it. Yeah. For me to get a good car, I'll have to receive it. Now, what qualification do I need to receive it? None. Your only qualification is what you already have. A child of God. Because God gives blessings. That's why I read that scripture I read to you yesterday in Psalm 127 and verse 2. God gives blessings to his beloved in sleep. If you are born again, you are God's beloved. And he says he gives you blessings even when you do nothing. So what's your qualification? I'm his child. Praise God. That's all you need. So you go before the Lord and say, Father, I, 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 need, I need to move. I don't like where I'm staying right now. I need to move to a better place. And then the Spirit of God will ask you, what do you want? Where do you want? Where do you want? Now, as someone who's smart, you go before and say, Lord, you know the books are with you. At this stage of my life, it has been written concerning me where I ought to live. I know. See, knowledge is everything. So, Lord, I know an angel is carrying my script. And he is in those. So, Lord, this is how we're going to do it. Can you direct me to the place that you have ordained for me? Now, you pray that prayer once. Get it. Now, and, and that's why understanding matters. When you finish praying like that, Say, thank you, Lord. I receive it. I receive direction concerning this. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, whenever you think about it again from that moment, say, Lord, I'm still, I'm still trusting you for that direction I asked you two weeks ago. I'm still trusting you for that direction. Lord, you, you haven't shown me anywhere yet that, that I'm supposed to leave you. Now, what are you doing? You are showing to him that you are expecting something from heaven. Now, guess what? In no time, one day, someone will call you. Hey, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm not doing. Come, let's go check something. Something where? What? Are you? And there's one place that uh, I want to go and check. Um, I'm not doing anything. You will just feel this compulsion to go, and then you follow the person, and then you get there. You you get into that neighborhood, and something hits you in your spirit. Say, hey, this is the neighborhood. Ah, and there is something about this neighborhood that is just getting into me. You see, what's going on? The Lord is walking. The Lord is walking. Now, when you, because you are smart in the things of the Spirit, you're like, okay, I asked God for this direction. Oh, I see he's leading me now. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So you begin to look around for the houses there. Now, which one do you really like? I think I'm liking this one. Praise God. You say, yeah, I like it. And then you go ahead and say, hey, how much does this cost? What does it take to live in this place? And then they tell you, this is what it's going to cost you. This is what's going to cost you every year. This is what's going to cost you every month. Okay, thank you. You go back before the Lord and say, Lord, I saw something today. And, and I have a sense in my heart that you're the one who led me there. Oh, you're the one who put it in that guy's heart to take me to that place. Lord, I, I saw something. I saw something. Praise God. And so, Lord, I bring the request before you. This is what they said. To live in that place, I require this and this. So Lord, you who led me to that place, I receive all these requirements in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Ah, someone is going to walk up to you or an opportunity is going to be given to you. See, this, that, this is how we increase our lives. Obviously, I can't finish this thing today because I need you to understand. This is how we upgrade our lives. 
And then you suddenly realize that you now have become really uncomfortable with where you are. Because now everything about you is in that direction. I'm not telling you, I'm not saying you put yourself under the pressure. No, you are not the one putting yourself under pressure. You just go on your knees and you want to pray concerning something. And then suddenly, oh, that house. Oh, Father, I bless you for that house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's possible. It's been given to me. Yes. And then soon the Spirit of God will begin to guide you. He will begin to guide you. Now, he's the one that will now determine if he wants you to get a better job. He's the one that will now determine if someone can even walk up to you and say, look, I just built a house and I don't know, God commanded me to give you a flat stake. Oh, you don't know it's possible? Or you don't know what God can do? Or someone will just show up and say, hey, God spoke to me to pay for a house for you. Oh, really? Yeah. Because you've got to receive it. Or because your mind is so locked on my job. See, even when I'm saying it, I say, wow, I wish this can happen to me. And then you go like, mm, how much am I even being paid? 30,000 naira. I better stay where I am. We're going to continue next week. This is, this is big. And you need to get it. Some of you are already getting it. Just enjoy and begin to receive and make your withdrawals from heaven. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I bless everyone watching right now. Holy Spirit, I can only communicate with these few words. But you are the one who reveals truth to our hearts. Open their eyes to your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye.